gentlemen, protocol having been established across the CARICOM region, I as host Trinidad and Tobago hosting the region, I'm duty bound to acknowledge Your Excellency the President of Trinidad and Tobago, Mrs. Christine Kangaloo and Mr. Corwin Garcia, the Chairman Philip Davis of CARICOM, outgoing Chairman, incoming Chairman Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, other CARICOM heads of government, Your Excellency Dr. Carla Barnett, Secretary General of the Caribbean Community, Your Excellency Dr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Your Excellency Hans Dok Su, Prime Minister of the Republic of Korea, the Honorable Chief Justice, Mr. Ivor Archie, and Mrs. Denise Rodriguez Archie, the Honorable Bridget Anisette George, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and Mr. Newman George, Senator the Honorable Nigel De Freitas, President of the Senate of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and Mr. Senator De Freitas, Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Ministers of Government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and other Ministers of Government of the region, Specially invited guests, Your Excellencies, Heads of Diplomatic Mission and Ambassadors to the Caribbean Community, Members of Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago, Chief Representatives of the International Organizations, Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, Members of the Media, Good evening. Today, it is my honor to welcome you to the beautiful Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago for the convening of the 45th regular meeting of the Conference of the Heads of Government of CARICOM. For us here in the Caribbean, this is a significant event, as tomorrow we also launch the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the signing of the original Treaty of Chagaramas, right here in Trinidad and Tobago. Historians of the future will agree that this celebration took place at a critical juncture in the regional integration movement. Never before have small states faced the broad and deep range of challenges that we face now. From climate change, pandemic, gun crimes and violence, transnational migration issues, to insecurity with food supplies, our region has been buffeted by many systemic storms. Throughout all of this, the majority of the people of our region have proven themselves to be resilient, resourceful, determined, and dignified. Today, I speak with confidence on behalf of all of my colleague heads of government when I say that we have been learning the lessons that history has taught us. It is true that some of the issues that our founding fathers grappled with on the long journey to Chagaramas are still very much with us. But this is not to say that we have not made progress. Fifty years after the birth of our union and with the experience of having spawned so many regional institutions and institutional arrangements that work so well for us, now might be a good time to reflect on what it might have been if we were able to hold a Caribbean nation together. Today, we point within CARICOM to the Caribbean Development Bank, the Caribbean Development Fund, the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, the Caribbean Meteorological Organization, CARICOM Implementing Agency for Crime and Security, the Caribbean Examinations Council, the Caribbean Court of Justice, the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, the Caribbean Agricultural Development Institute, the University of the West Indies, the Caribbean Competition Commission, 
We also have a multilateral air services agreement and we have in place a double taxation treaty. And I carefully add a West Indies cricket. <laughs> I, as a typical Caribbean man, was born in Tobago, lived in Trinidad, studied in Jamaica, worked on the volcanoes in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dominica, Montserrat and St. Kitts, marveled at the power of the waters at Caicho Falls in Guyana, and counted the beach in Antigua, Barbados and Grenada, all the while dreaming on what, of what it could have been if the politics had allowed us to have one Caribbean nation from northern Bahamas to our Brazilian border with Guyana and Suriname. What a wonderful world it could have been today, even if we had accepted three quarters of a loaf instead of no bread. However, what's done is done. Let us not despair, because in the absence of political union, we were able, if not through vision, but through necessity, we have been able to salvage a good chunk of regional functionality in very many areas, notwithstanding the stress dished out by the men's cricket team. We have CARICOM as the next best thing to bring about regional cooperation. And we must continue to grow the integration movement by adding new blocks to the structure even as we strengthen what already exists. Even where there was doubt in the beginning, the experience must have shown us that we are stronger together. And even though we are an amalgam of small pieces of the globe, on the world stage, we might be small, but we are not insignificant. As CARICOM, we are at our strongest. We could be at our best. Let's claim our space in this world and just do it. On this special celebratory occasion, we can reflect with reverence on the events that transpired in Chagaramas on July 4th, 1973, and pay homage to the foresight our founding fathers had when they laid the foundation upon which this great family of nations was built. I anticipate that there will be many moments of introspection and reflection over the course of the next few days as we take the opportunity to mark this golden anniversary together, side by side. I am particularly delighted to acknowledge the four visionaries who pioneered our regional integration movement with valor and ensured that the original Treaty of Chagaramas was signed on that fateful day. I speak about the late Prime Minister's Errol Barrow of Barbados, Forbes Burnham of Guyana, Michael Manley of Jamaica, and Dr. Eric Eustace Williams of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> they were leaders who understood that our strength as small states lies in our unity. They understood that our collective destiny can only be fulfilled through our determined collaboration in the face of global systems that are designed to keep us weak, dependent, and apart from each other. It is my belief that if those founding fathers could speak to us today, they would re-emphasize the essential role of this regional leadership to empower our people to navigate the storms that the international order consistently throws our way. Indeed, I hereby inform the people of the Caribbean community that tomorrow, on the fourth day of July 2023, the 50th anniversary of the CARICOM's founding, we, the heads of government, will be placing into a special time capsule our letters, our reflections, our advice, our lessons addressed to our successors 50 years from now, to be opened by them on July 4th, 2073. 
I hope you see us there tomorrow in Chagaramas as well. As I survey this lovely audience gathered here in this beautiful afternoon in Port of Spain, I am reminded that a much smaller audience would have traveled to Trinidad and Tobago for that very first Heads of Government Conference in July 1973, which was convened by the late great Dr. Eric Eustace Williams, the then Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Indeed, it was Dr. Williams, an eminent Caribbean historian, who proposed the creation of a Caribbean community at that time. The pioneering members, Barbados, Guyana, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago. Today, 50 years later, our membership has grown to include 15 members and five associate members, with even further growth is near at hand. We look forward to joining hands with Martinique and the brothers and sisters of the Dutch Antilles soon. Those early steps taken in Chagaramas have led us far beyond what the naysayers and doomsayers were certain would have been a short lifespan and another disastrous shattering. But here we are today, 50 years on, side by side, in mutual solidarity, regard, respect, and esteem. Strong, committed, and unified. Together, this regional family of nations can examine with pride our achievements during the last half century. We have faced many challenges and have risen to overcome them. Despite the difficulties, through our cooperation, our shared goals, and above all else, through the friendship within CARICOM. Our regional integration movement has not only survived, but it has thrived expanded and flourished. Whilst we recognize that there's a whole lot more to be attained at this juncture, we can proudly say that we have been going in the right direction. And with re renewed confidence and vigor, we can indicate our intention to continue by joining the famous Jamaican radio announcer, Dan Toppin, whose clarion call was always, today the Caribbean tomorrow the world. Honored ladies and gentlemen, I have the distinction of having served in the political sphere for decades, not quite as long as my comrade Ralph Gonzalez, but long enough to have witnessed firsthand the way that CARICOM has remained relevant to the needs and dreams and aspirations of its regional citizenry. Our children need to be taught its relevance and its history. Now, as we enter the post-pandemic era, our bonds are more important than ever before. None of us will ever forget those long, dark days and nights when over a few years, the lives and livelihoods of our people hung in the balance under the threat of what was then a very novel death-dealing virus. Our trade, tourism, manufacturing, culture, services, and our very living were severely affected and the gross domestic product of every member state was significantly affected without exception and we went into stark decline. The resilience of our community endured this test and survived, in large part to the determination of our people and the strength bestowed upon us by our ancestors due to the strength of our regional organs such as the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA and due to a caliber of leadership right across the Caribbean that joined in solidarity to advocate when needed, to remonstrate when necessary, to share when required, and through it all, to stand together through thick and thin. Over the past year, we have rebuilt and forged ahead as we have actively advanced the regional agenda, 
facing our challenges head on. From rising regional debt to growing trade deficits, we as a community have been buffeted by the ravages of an international financial system designed to disempower us. As serious as the world's problems are, and having been shut out of many of the markets through trade restrictions, like the sugar and banana industries, we can hardly be excited by the ongoing prospect of being escorted out of the world's financial system through the risking and loss of correspondent banking, not to mention being encouraged to hastily abandon our hydrocarbon resources, even as others expand their natural gas production, open up nuclear power, and fire up their own coal powering station. <laughs> Through participation in a series of ongoing high level meetings amongst ourselves and with the international community, we continue to chart our own destiny. We did this back in 2001 when we signed the revised Treaty of Chagaramas and created the CARICOM single market and economy. On the 3rd and 4th December 2018, we, in special meeting, assembled at the Hilton Hotel in Port of Spain, and there we agreed to drive the process by unanimously signing on to the St. Anne's Accord. We did this when we, as a community, met with leaders from around the world to spell out our perspectives and our priorities. And some of those very leaders have joined us in celebration here tonight. We did this when we held landmark events such as the Agri-Investment Forum in Guyana, the second of which was hosted in Trinidad and Tobago, the Afro-Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum in Barbados, the regional symposium to address crime as a public health issue in Port of Spain, and most recently, key stakeholder meetings to help address the crisis in our fellow member state of Haiti. These are but a few of the focused approaches that we have undertaken as heads to reinforce sustainable development, tackle poverty, and address rising crime and insecurity in the region. I say all of this to highlight that, beyond the doubts, CARICOM is working diligently to serve the people of the region. While at times the going may be slow, or the outcome may not have been readily apparent, we all continue to build on the strong foundation laid 50 years ago. Even as we prepare for this great future, as Bob Marley and Franz Fano said, we cannot forget our past. We can see that our trajectory, though arduous at times, is one that would lead to a better future for all our people. We, as the leaders, must continue to do our part in contribution to this united journey. And in doing so, we will ensure that the foundation laid by our founding fathers was not just a foundation for us, but also one for our children and for generations to follow. To do this, we must continue to have boundless faith in our destiny. It is not my role this evening to speak to the substantive issues in detail. Those will be addressed later on by chairman of the conference and others. My task is a simple one, to set the tone and to extend the warm hospitality of Trinidad and Tobago to our regional partners and international guests over the coming days. I hope you're satisfied with our arrangements. I must acknowledge that efforts of the Trinidad and Tobago team and the CARICOM Secretarial Staff, who in collaboration with the Chairman of Conference, Prime Minister of Dominica, have worked tirelessly to prepare a fitting program to commemorate the launch of the 50th anniversary celebrations. In recognition of the fact that the people of our region are renowned for being able to have a good time, this program includes a special 50th anniversary concert planned for tomorrow evening. I am sure that you all look forward to being able to unwind in Caribbean style. Let us celebrate as we in the Caribbean know how. Tomorrow morning, 
heads of governments will return to Shagaramas to pay poignant tribute to the important beginnings of this great community. As Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, it is my deep honor to host you on this, the Caribbean Golden Jubilee of Caribbean, CARICOM. And I look forward to deepening the fraternal bonds within our family of nations in the years ahead. I wish you a most productive, memorable, and enjoyable time in Trinidad and Tobago. All that's left for me to do now is to sincerely thank my friend and brother Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of Dominica, incoming Chairman of CARICOM, for visualizing this day and agreeing to allow Trinidad and Tobago the honor of revisiting our CARICOM past as we commit to a brighter and closer CARICOM future. Brothers and sisters, I thank you.